is the number one holiday question that everyone's asking. Tyler, can you make a video where you paint a stompa? It's exactly like all the other videos where you paint a dirty orc vehicle, but it's a stompa this time, just step by step, the same thing as countless other videos you've done already. And my answer is yes, that I'm gonna do that. First step is to start off by making a Warlord Titan video. I realize it's too ambitious for Thursday night at 9 p.m. And you've got this perfectly nice Stompa, who's very handsome, and you can test the color schemes on him and practice for the even the bigger boy. Magnetize them with some rare earth magnets by Magnet Baron, I think. Uh, Magnet Baron's great. I'll just plug in. I don't remember who these are from. I honestly forget what size I got too, but I think it's a 25 millimeter. This tutorial is not very useful. A trick I learned recently is to mix a little bit of liquid Tex white ink and with white scar or whatever branded white you'd prefer to use and uh, put that through airbrush to improve the consistency. Something else I've been using a lot is these uh, stencils that are made for cake decorating. They're just like the perfect size for big vehicles. Green Stuff World made this little one that I'm using. If you take the effort to actually like tape them down, they'll look a lot better than they do here, but I'm going to weather pretty heavily over most of this. It's not going to be that visible, so I didn't bother doing so. I sprayed golden acrylic fluorescent red on the horns, but it's a really glossy glossy paint. I had to man it down quite a bit and might use just a more conventional miniature paint for the red in the future. Undercoating all the areas I wanted to be bright red, white first helped them stand out more. It makes them pop very easily. This is me spraying some Vallejo acrylic weathering stuff. <laughs> stuff? What is it? Isn't it? What's it called? Vallejo model wash for light colors. 76.514. Maroon Oscura. Dark brown. Livis. I've read it pretty liberally. It doesn't do that much over black, so it's mostly just to make the whites blend in with the blacks and reds more. Vallejo also makes this light orange color, but I will not read the entire name of. I sprayed that on the edges of where I sprayed the brown to make a smoother gradient between the white. It looks pretty extreme in that last shot, but as you can see, when it dries, it becomes a lot more subtle. And at this point, I had painted as much under the skull as I wanted to, so it was time to glue it on. We got another Vallejo paint, bronze. I use this on like every model ever. I applied a pretty heavy dry brush to a lot of the metal areas. Magnetization came in pretty handy here. Uh, the arm magnetization is mostly for karate chop action. I don't actually plan to swap this weapon out ever maybe uh but yeah it, it was good for this and it, it's fun to swing it around okay flash forward yikes i forgot to film a lot the next two steps are really just dry brushing some bulk and metal on top of the brass to make it a little less saturated and then applying decals uh decals i've gone over in a bunch of videos but real quick putting down decal fix then applying your decal on top of that followed by covering the decal in microsole setting solution the red one followed by your favorite brand of matte varnish being applied after is really all there is to it. Using a sponge dipped in black paint is a great way to weather the edges of a model and apply paint chipping. You can put it over the decals too to make them look less like stickers. Uh, someone in the comments told me that once and I was like, damn, I used to do that and I totally forgot. Uh, shout out to them, whoever they are. I repeated this exact same process with a bright silver. I think this is the Duncan Rhodes Mithril Silver. Sponging over the edges to make them look chipped. You can see it and the part of the model that just rotated fast, but what, it's everywhere. You can see it still. To break up the uniformity of the graminess. I like putting like a couple of spots of a really bright color to contrast the dark. Here I'm just applying a base coat of white again over any areas that are like lights. And this is followed up with a coat of golden acrylic fluorescent high flow acrylic paint. Uh, this is the neon pink color that they make. And for the brightest points I covered them in this red fluorescent ink. It doesn't need to be watered down at all. It's really really light so you need to put it over white. It won't work over black and just a couple thin coats will do. I like to also add that this whole process like works if you paint it by hand too. You'll just have like less soft transitions, but you can do the golden acrylic fluorescent followed by red over uh, just like a hand painted base too. And for this last part, I'm just airbrushing some purple ink followed by black ink at the bottom, creating the opposite effect of what we did at the top of just adding another pass of shadows. Wait, one more step. I forgot I put some orange on top. Same process, just orange this time. I designed these flags in Photoshop and then printed them. This is something I'm doing a lot lately to make little like banners. They're printed on cardstock paper and I use Mod Podge to attach and seal them. If you Mod Podge coat some, regular computer paper might work fine. I just like mine a little thicker and they feel more durable this way. Um, but yeah, what you do is you just take super glue and you put that on the interior of the flag, like so. And then 
pointed hair vat to your flagpole. Um, just oh, <laughs> that's a big glue drop. Yikes! Good thing I think that gets covered soon. <laughs> Yikes! That's a big glue drop. Oh, you're on it, Tyler. Nice. You got the paper towel handy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So wrap it around like that, and then it'll stay in place pretty good. It'll be stable enough for you to start putting the Mod Podge on. I use a bamboo barbecue skewer to apply the Mod Podge to the interior of the flag. It, bamboo barbecue skewer sounds kind of fancy. You can be anything except your finger. It could be your finger. And then just start bending it into place to look like a flag. And once you got your flags on there, if there's any white areas that you want to cover up, you can just use the appropriate color paint that you'd like to go over them. And I use some brown tones to create washes and streaks to make them look grimy and dirty and match the filthiness of the rest of the model, including our old friend, th this brown. I right, airbrush the recesses of the flags too to create the illusion of depth. And at some point in the process, you're going to want to seal it with Mod Podge. You can do this in the beginning or after. It doesn't really matter. And uh, I'm just dry brushing some white on here to create more depth. There's some other steps I left out. Like I edge highlighted a lot of the metal with mithril silver, the same color that we we'll use for the sponging. And there's a few other weathering things I put on here, like enamel paints and uh, dirty down rust, which uh, I go over in other videos if you want to watch those. I never know like how redundant to be, so I didn't put them in here. But you can get pretty far just with those Vallejo acrylic washes. They're really nice if you don't want to use enamel paints. And if you don't have or don't want to use those, Agrax Earthshade is awesome. A lot of the contrast paints when thinned down of contrast medium can be really great for streaking and doing rusty weathering stuff too. Uh, yeah, but as my stompa, thanks for watching this whole stompa video. I don't know what comes next. Maybe Chaos Nights, maybe getting ready for LVO, maybe one of the seven videos that have been on a hard drive for like six months and I never edited. Uh, who knows? If you want to see more, please consider subscribing. Uh, I also have a Patreon and our Discord is great and very active, shockingly active, honestly. I gotta do more shit in there, but yeah, please come by, hang out and uh thanks for watching today goodbye